What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be discussing the 2019 draftees including the rookie drafts that happened on Friday. We're going to be discussing all about the latest recruits that we've got and see what they can bring to the footy club in the near future. Certainly a good crop of players, um, especially going through all their stats and all their juniors as well. It looks looking like we've got a great crop and a couple of great draft deals as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and look at the 2019 NAB AFL draftees from Port Adelaide. It was a massive night for Port Adelaide on the Wednesday night heading into the first round of the draft with picks 12, 16 and 18 before the night had even started. But due to obviously uh, Academy and Father-Son matching uh, bids, Port Adelaide's draft picks were pushed down by a couple of selections. Um, and it was a busy night for Port early. We um, obviously had pick 14 in the end, um, picking up Miles Bergman, who is a talented young man. He's a, he's a really ro he's a roaming type of forward that's really going to be able to um, exercise the opposition. He's got great pace, great agility, um, and great skill as well. And his ability to hit the scoreboard um, with small amounts of impact, it would seem. Um, not, a, not a massive disposal getter, but he is able to um, hit the scoreboard, impact the game. And I think that's something, you know, on along the lines of what Robbie Gray can do. He's certainly a one that can have 13 disposals in a game, but he'll kick three goals and it'll just be a game-changing moment. So if someone like a Miles Bergman can come in and do that specific role and really you know, be a successor to what Robbie Gray is, um, I think we've certainly matched it really well. It's kind of what we expected um, with pick 14, there was not, not going to be like a picket left. There was not going to be a Stevens left, a McCassie or anything like that um, to fill the needs. So to know that Port Adelaide went into the night with Miles Bergman on the list and basically ticked off every single um, you know candidate they wanted with each of their picks, it's absolutely fantastic. So Miles Bergman was a great pickup, and I certainly can't wait to see him playing in the future. Pick 18 saw Port Adelaide pick up Mitch Georgiatis who was a draft bolter on the night. He's a big key forward. Big key forward. He's very competitive. He's very tall, um, but he can take a great mark. And I think somebody in the media actually labelled him as the next Buddy Franklin, which was is a bit <laughs> a bit of a stretch because obviously Buddy's one of a kind. But to know that we picked up George, um, George Artis, sorry, not George. I'm going to call him George because a lot of people won't be able to pronounce that last name. But I think essentially the greatest thing about this is we've, we've restocked our... Um, tall forward list and with with Mitchie he's going to be able to you know develop well develop nicely and he could possibly even come out and play a few games next year in 2020 but but 191 centimeters he'll be able to fulfill uh his body he's got great talent obviously he missed a lot of last year with a massive quad injury so that's going to be a little bit um you know, interesting to see how he develops but he he was he's actually basically full fitness he and uh, we'll be able to um, get a, a full preseason going. So definitely a great pickup and something that I think a lot of people were surprised about for Port Adelaide when uh, going into the draft. But nonetheless, we got our man and uh, I look forward to seeing Mitchie playing up forward uh, hopefully in the coming years. So that ended Wednesday night. That was a, um, a wrap after being pushed out of the draft uh, round one with pick 22 we ended up with. We ended up trading it overnight and essentially ended up with just one behind, pick 23. Picking up Dylan Williams, who is another key forward player. He's a really bulky type. He's going to be uh, one of those that's going to really be able to um, be that bigger body type of player down forward. He is only 185 centimetres, but he's got quite a big bulk on him, and he can uh, be a bit of a swingman and push down in defence. He's got great skill, great uh, running ability as well, and I really can see him uh, developing quite nicely in the mix uh, along with the other draftees. He's got great goal sense as well. He's he's picked, uh, I think he kicked over 40 goals last season. So he's definitely going to be one to watch out for and really develop. And uh, he's replacing that small forward type of player that we had with Aiden Johnson and Sam Gray, who did end up leaving the list. So a great pick up. Pick 25. We matched the bid from Sydney, losing a couple of later picks, but we came into the draft with knowing that we're going to pick up father-son selection, Jackson Mead, uh, who's certainly been a player that we've eyed off for such a period of time now. Uh, he's a big-bodied midfielder. He's that type of player that can play up forward. He can run around. He's got great pace, great skill, um, and great goal sense as well for a guy that has uh, more of an inside mind. So definitely seeing him come into the team. A Mead in a Port Adelaide Guernsey is just something iconic. Um, a lot of people wouldn't know, but his father, Darren, won the first ever AFL Best and Ferris for the power. So for him to come in and probably have a, a, an impact 
quite quickly. You could almost see him playing round one already. He's already built for AFL, so he's definitely going to make a massive impact and hopefully, like his dad did, make a name for himself at the Port Adelaide Footy Club. The next day, we saw the rookie draft, and look, to be honest, it was another father-son selection that sort of went under the radar a little bit, but Trent Burgoyne, the son of Peter Burgoyne, was picked up as a father-son selection in the rookie draft, and uh, 177 centimetres, he's only a small fella, he's got great pace, um, as his dad did, great ball use, he did miss a lot of this year with uh, hamstring issues, and it's just never seemed to got his body quite right, but you might, obviously as a rookie, you'll be able to develop him. Um, and as a Burgoyne, you know he's got natural talent and natural pace, and I can really see him developing nicely along the wing and effectively going like his dad did, a small forward type as um, at the beginning, but pushed into the midfield, became a prolific ball winner, great skill, and I don't think we've ever seen someone quite as skillful from the middle of the ground than Peter Burgoyne did, and hopefully his son can fulfill that. But definitely with, with Trent coming into the club, you'll definitely be able to see us um, create a more, well, we've got pace now, but with him uh, developing, it'll make for a more of a more of a faster pace midfield for sure. Our last pick was Jake Pacini, a tall defender from the Swan Districts in WA. He's another rookie that we've picked up at 195 centimetres, a tall defender, um, and I think that was something in the draft that I think a lot of us fans did expect was for us to pick a tall defender up and replace that Dougal Howard type role and really create um, more of a, a deeper uh, defence um, like we did have. But now we're kind of feeling a bit short. But with Jake coming into the side, I think uh, he'll be able to develop in the Magpies team and be that uh, backman that we're probably probably lacking. Uh, and as a 195 centimetre uh, tall guy that he is, It'll definitely be able to make a bigger impact. And he might develop more in the Magpies than not, and a lot of rookies do do that early, but um, he'll definitely be able to contribute to the side. And hopefully we see him playing down in defence in case any of our defenders do go down. So there are there are the six new recruits. We also, uh, with Boyd Woodcock and Riley Grundy, we did relist them as rookies as well to create a bit of space on the senior list. And we've done that now, we've fulfilled it, and we're going to be able to, oh, they're going to start pre-season training as they would have today. Um, first session so it was great to see Hamish Hartley get around the boys as well uh, with the dinner last night and you know seeing a Mead and a Burgoyne in a Port Adelaide Guernsey once again and it's not quite a Williams but it is uh, Dylan Williams so it'll definitely be something to behold and I'm really excited about this crop of players I think they're going to make a bigger impact than some people think obviously may not be as um, exciting as Connor Rosie Butters and Dersma were to start their seasons. But you'll definitely see a couple of these boys making an impact early on in 2020. And I cannot wait to see them develop at Port Adelaide. Thanks for watching, everyone. My name is Anthony. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide content. And as always, 